um, so I just wanted to have a stable income and just make something of myself. So I met somebody at a networking event and he was a teacher and I went to school for um, English. I wanted to be a teacher but like not really something like I really honestly wanted to be like a psychiatrist but then chemistry and math and all that and I was like yeah girl that's nothing. I was like yeah girl that's not for me. Uh, I want to do therapy something like that but you know it didn't happen. So he was an English teacher and we were just talking and basically at this networking event um, there was only wine and I was dying for some water. Sorry about the background noises. I'm just gonna let it go. Um, there was only wine and it was a majority black because it was like a fundraising event for this organization, Birthright Africa, um, that basically, uh, is a non-profit and it sends, uh, black people of the diaspora back to Africa. So you don't have to be directly African, but if you're black, they want to take you to Africa to discover your roots and all that good stuff. Look into it, guys. Donate. Uh, it's a really good organization. Everything. The flights are paid for for the, for the um, people that are chosen, the food, the hotel, everything. And it's also cultural exploration as well, so definitely look into it. But the event was a fundraising event. Um, and there was only wine. And I was like seeing the waiters and they were Hispanic. So I was like, oh my God, I can talk to them in Spanish. And I was like, please give me water, please. And they were just like, Wait, there's only tap, but the tap has to filter. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. Let me get it. Fast forward, I'm drinking water, and then this guy, this tall black guy comes, and he's like, you guys told me there was no water, and I'm like, the way he said it, I just wasn't messing with his energy, and I'm very sensitive about uh, Latino immigrants, it's because my mom, I just, when people talk to them, some type of way, I get in my feelings, so I was like, excuse me, sir, the water is tap, so can you, like, why are you talking to them like that, and he was like, oh my god, I'm sorry, fast forward, we networked. I found out he was a teacher. I was with a friend there and, you know, we exchanged emails or whatever. Well, I didn't because my phone was like dead or something. I don't know. But fast forward, he emailed my friend and was like, hey, can you please forward uh, my contact information to uh, Charm? And he did. And he was like, hey, my school's hiring. Um, and I was like, okay, like, cool. And he was like, you know, they have like this position that I think you would be good for. It's a new position, like whatever, whatever, whatever. So I like was looking into it. I emailed the principal, my principal, uh, and they didn't get back to me for months. And then they got back to me for an interview. Then they didn't get back to me for months. They started in November, and I basically the whole process went until March, and I was pretty much over it. At first, I was like anxious and excited. But like I was like, if I get the job, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I'm over it. Like I'm not gonna like die over this. And they got back to me. I got hired. Woo! We're not gonna get too into it. But I basically help students get internships and stuff like that. So I'm preparing the youth. Um, I really like my job. Um, it's not a. It's not a good. It's not a really good paying job. But you know all the things that are like good jobs never get paid like teachers never get paid uh like people that are doing like good work never get paid a decent amount whatever but i've been there for a month now um i was super anxious the kids were like who the heck is she um but right now uh the vibes are meshing really well the students are getting to know me i'm getting to know them i've had so many students apply to internships on um, old jobs and uh they all got hired so but that's because the school has a program where if you apply to this specific job they will hire you so so far 100 students have applied so 100 students have got hired um but it's going really well i'm excited um i'm happy the thing about it is it's it's a temporary job since this is like a new position they're testing out the waters and if i do well they'll keep me so the thing about that is like I've been kind of anxious because I'm like oh my god like I'm like getting like attached to these kids and like I don't want to get too attached and blah blah like I'm having this like mental battle and I'm just like I need to hit these quotas I have to hit these numbers I have to get this data but honestly I should go with the flow and enjoy every day that I'm with the students because I don't know it could be my last day when school finishes but other than that other than that um everything's been really well um now, I spoke that I wasn't really going through uh, depression like that. So, like, ASMR, a lot of ASMR artists started their channel because they were going through something and they, like, they overcame it and they wanted to help other people.
see what everybody said and it's so like hard for me to see because I don't want to go there and like see that kind of stuff triggers me up and like nobody does it on purpose nobody wants to be sad on purpose but it's just like so hard for me to see people be sad and like in short people that are sad you don't gravitate towards them that's never been a thing for anybody you want to go towards somebody who's always happy who's optimistic so like when people are sad now it's like hard for me to gravitate towards them although i empathize if that makes sense if i'm is sad i'm gonna be there for them like period but like i'll go on twitter and like <sighs> it is a lot of trauma um and i just don't like it um because i'm not there so i'm kind of like uh, yeah i don't really want to deal with that because I know that when I was dealing with my depression, that might have been a lot for people to see me talk about specific things and like it was triggering to them. So now that I'm seeing these things and I'm in a better mindset, I'm just like, oh my God, no, I don't want to read about this. Like, can we talk about happy things? Like, there's so many, there's already way too many things happening in the black community that I have to be sad about. Like, I just don't want to read about like issues, like anybody else's issues, honestly. But yeah, it's just like, not being as depressed or not being depressed as of this moment or not dealing with my depression right now um it just brings everybody else's sadness to the forefront it's so obvious to me and i'm just like oh my god no stay away like i just need positive energy positive vibes i can't i can't i can't do it um but i empathize um but it's, I just don't want to be near it, honestly. Um, when you're sad, you don't want to go to sad people. You want to, you know, misery loves company. When sadness loves company. And I just don't want to be with that company because then I will become sad. Um, so, also, now that I've been out of my rut, my depression for a while, I've started reaching out to people, trying to be friends. And with the ASMR community, like, people either think you're cloud chasing when you're trying to be friendly or like whatever the case may have not necessarily done that um it's not an issue but like i've started to try um reaching out to people that i seen in school that i thought were pretty cool or people that always respond to my stories on my personal instagram and i've met with a few people and it's been good vibes you guys good vibes especially this is one girl that i hung out with and she sp speaks on her a story about stuff that I go through, the traumas that I have went through, but like the way, something about the way she talks, she talks about how she healed from those issues, and I was like, oh my god, like she's dope. She, I noticed that I gravitate towards people who are getting their stuff together. Like I don't know, like I gravitate towards people who are just they acknowledge what they've been through, they're working through what they've been through, and they can express their feelings properly i used to be the kind of person that i didn't want to lose friends so i would never like speak up but like i thought speaking up again something was mean but like my friends are so freaking nice like i'm, I'm like the mean friend right my friends are so freaking nice but they know how to set that boundary and they do it in a way where it's like wow i respect this so much like you're not being mean the other person there's no way they can get it confused like there's no way they can be insulted you worded this so perfectly that nobody is gonna cross you and like they do it in such a nice way and i'm like i want to learn from you like i want to learn from my friends and i'm so grateful that i can learn from my friends and i'm so grateful that <laughs> we all can learn from each other there was a time where I'm like, oh my god, I have nothing to offer them. But like, maybe I do. They wouldn't be my friend if I didn't. But like, I just learned so much. There's way too many interruptions, so I'm gonna end it. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that I'm just so grateful that I can learn from my friends. That I can literally, like, if you guys watch Attack on Titan, Emir, uh, when she was like, ready to risk it all for that blonde girl i forgot her name but like that's how i feel with my friends like i look up to them so much like i will i will give everything for them like i just am amazed at the kind of people that they are i'm grateful that i have this energy this i just love my 
friends I just do I do I admire them like so much and I hope they admire me too but yes I forgot to mention I have been going hard with my my Japanese I've been really studying my Japanese on like I stopped for a while too and I've been on it you guys I, I study every day which I probably shouldn't because that's kind of like I mean I guess you should write you should study every day but like I feel like you burn yourself out but I've really been enjoying learning and I study from the book Genki I am on Genki 1 of well, I guess like second edition right I'm on chapter 6 when I was in school and college studying Japanese I think we only went to chapter 5 maybe 6 but I honestly did not retain anything. I was just trying to pass. And it's weird because I chose that class for my last semester knowing that it could be hard. Um, but I passed, but I just didn't study afterwards and I kind of lost everything. Yeah, I forgot most of the stuff, but like the beginning chapters, it was like really, she really drilled it in us. So um, it came back to me quickly, but the last, like the chapter four, when I was in school, I didn't get it at all, but I get it now. Chapter 5, uh, pretty easy. Um, I don't even remember studying it, honestly. Chapter 6, the chapter that I'm on right now, it's busting my balls. It's, it's really busting my balls. Um, I'm getting there. Slowly, every day, I'm getting there more and more. But that's, that's usually what it is about learning a language. You gotta keep going at it. And I've been trying to go to Japan um for since like 2020 honestly but the pandemic and everything in japan is like f everybody i'm closed but it's looking like they're opening slowly so next year hopefully next year i'm going if it opens i'm going like i don't care i told my friends like do you want to come and they're like yeah but if they don't come i'm going i'm taking a a, a one person trip and i am thinking that by the end of the year I want to have the book done because the book is 12 chapters and I feel like by the end of the book I should be able to have basic conversations. I can understand people, I can understand what people are saying but like of course I'm not going to know the entire language yet so by the end of the book they said that I should understand a lot and I feel like I will. So with that being said, Japan, your girl's coming. Get ready for her because she ready for you. Period. Um... <laughs> But if you're a Japanese speaker, yo, please study with me. Like, I need somebody to talk to. Um, arigato. Hontoni arigato. If you do. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for now because it sounds a little crazy. Yeah, you see that? That was a little crazy. So we're gonna uh, end the video here. And hopefully my next family video, my neighbors are like STFU and everybody is STFUing. And we can really get into the rambling tea.